Hey everybody, this is Professor Mankowski, and in this video we're going to take a look at one final aspect of Section 7-2. What happens when we compare t-distribution directly against a z-distribution for a particular example, when we do an interval estimate? Now, in the last video, we found out that if we're doing an estimate for a population average and we have to use a sample standard deviation instead of a population standard deviation, that's where we end up using the t-formula. The t-formula is going to give us a much wider interval to estimate a population average with, and that's because it's compensating. It's giving us extra cushioning to compensate for the fact that we don't know the population standard deviation. Now, we also worked at question number 12 in section 7-2, and when we worked through this question, the standard deviation was given to us from a sample, and that was how we knew right away, obviously, to do the T distribution. And we had found out that our interval estimate was going to be 99% confidence that the speed thunderstorms moved through this area was between 13 and 16 miles an hour. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the exact same question, but we're going to make one little difference in it. We're going to pretend that we actually know sigma, the population standard deviation, and we're going to set it equal to the next, uh, rather, the exact same value, 1.7. So if we want to build the interval that way, with the same level of confidence, that would bring us back to the z distribution. And if we bring up the numbers of what we would get for a low side and a high side, we would end up 99% confident that the speeds thunderstorms are going to move through the area would be between 13.78 and 16.21 miles an hour. Now let's take that result and let's compare it exactly against what we were just looking at when we used the t-distribution. Okay, so when we look at the difference between our interval in T versus Z. On the low side, we have a 13.78 compared to a 13.6. On the high side, a 16.21 compared to 16.4. Now, the differences between what you have between the 13.78 compared with 13.6 that's a very minuscule difference. The difference between 16.21 is a very slight difference against the 16.4. But remember, we're using smaller numbers. If we had used larger numbers, like in the tens of thousands, the difference would be much more apparent. So our big takeaway is that even though in our case the difference was kind of subtle, when we're using T distribution, we are actually ending up with a wider interval. If we had used the Z distribution, the numbers are actually giving us a more narrow interval. So this is a little bit more just to assist us understanding that when we use the T interval, it's mathematically compensating by giving us a little bit more cushion.